My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. What I have here is the 3FUL Gear Land Shan 1 Pro Tent. I am going to seam seal this tent in this episode. And I'm going to show you how to do this process the easy way. There's numerous ways that you can go about seam sealing a tent. All of them but one is extremely messy. This is the simplest of methods. And this is a method that I've developed over the course of 10 years. It is super simple and all that you will need are a few items. Item number one is a syringe with a curved tip. This has no needle on it, nothing like that, but it does come to a fine point. Next up, you're going to need the correct seam sealer for the tent that you're sealing or the tarp. Basically folks, they make different types of seam sealers for different materials. With this tent here, this is a sill nylon. With that being the case, I need some silicone tent sealer. In addition to the seam sealer, you will need an acid brush. In this case, the brush came with the seam sealer, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you will find the seam sealer by itself or as part of a larger kit. Now, speaking of which, there are seam sealing kits out there that feature funky little heads with brushes that basically go on the top of the seam sealer. They absolutely suck. Do not use them. Trust me, if you use them, you're going to make a huge mess. Don't do it. Now, of course, there's always like one person who says, oh, I've done that. Doesn't make a mess at all. BS. There's a reason why there are thousands upon thousands of forums out there of people complaining about the seam sealing process. It's because those tools are not very good. That's why I've developed this system and it works incredibly well. It's neat, it's tidy, it doesn't make a big mess, it dries fast, it looks good, and it performs good. Some additional items that you may want. Latex gloves an old rag, some paper towels, and you may want some acetone to clean everything up. Let's say you get it on your fingers, acetone will get it off. When it comes to the 3FUL company, they do not seam seal their products, so you have to do this yourself or pay them an additional charge to do it. When I purchased this tent, they were not offering that service, but I think they are now. I'm not sure what the price is. It might be $40 to have them seam seal it. Either you can pay that price, have them do it, or you could do it yourself. This is a process that a lot of people are hesitant to do because oftentimes with those kits out there, as I mentioned, it makes such a mess. It can be a real nightmare. But luckily, this system is super simple. It'll save you some money. And also, it's kind of fun. So with that being said, everyone, let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, you need your syringe. You also need your seam sealer. When you open this up, you will find that it is sealed. So you have to punch a hole in it. Oftentimes, there will be a little spike in the end of the cap, which you can use to punch a hole in it. But that's not the case with this one for some reason. So I'm going to use my knife here. You should be prepared that once you puncture this, that it's under pressure somewhat and it will begin coming out. So let's get the syringe ready. I'm going to punch a hole in it. In this case, it's not coming out. That's surprising, actually. So now you take this and you squirt it in here. You don't have to fill it too full. A little bit goes a long way. Put the cap back on or you will be sorry. Now you take the plunger, you begin putting it back in, turn it upside down. That way the air goes to the top. You will have some coming out of the end. It will be just a small amount. Take your paper towel, have it ready. Go ahead and push on the plunger until you have the air coming out, just like that. You can see here with the plunger, right? There's air in the tip. You can pull back on this just a little bit and it puts more air in here. That way you don't have to worry about the seam sealer coming out or leaking out. So you can put that down until you're ready. I tell you what, before we get started, there are a few points to make. When it comes to seam sealing, you always seam seal the outside of the tent. Seam tape is done at the factory, in some cases, not this one, on the inside of the tent. Seam sealing is done to the outside of the tent. Next, you can dilute some seam sealers, but this is not something that I've ever done. I've never found the need. This system works well enough on its own. Next, everyone, when it comes to the curved tip syringe, these are very inexpensive. You can get like four or five of these for about $4, very cheap. The same goes for these little acid brushes. These are very inexpensive if you have to purchase these on their own. Also, talking about the syringe, if you find that two littles coming out at one time when you're pushing on the plunger, you could take a pair of scissors or your knife and cut the tip and make it so that more will come out. The last point to make is that you need a good sheltered place to do this, and the tent needs to be set up for at least six hours. The instructions will tell you 
three to six hours. I always do at least six. And if at all possible, I leave the tent out overnight set up. It's vital that the seam sealer dries and cures 100% before you begin breaking down the materials. It needs to adhere to the material and cure. With that being said, everyone, if you have a garage, that's a great place to do this. You could do this in your living room. You can do this out on your porch. No matter what, you need to do it in a location where the tent is protected, not only from rain, but also from the wind. If it's a little bit breezy, that's good. If it's windy, that's bad. It goes without saying that the tent needs to be cleaned before doing this process. So if you're setting up the tent for the first time, you're going to seam seal it, it should be clean. If you are making a repair to a tent, go ahead, clean the area. And you can do this very simply with just water and a rag, wipe it, let it dry, then you can start. Our focus for this process are the seams. We are looking for all of the seams, all of the stitching, that's what we're going to coat with a seam sealer. We're focusing on those areas because those are the weak points with any tent. When you have a high quality tent, water is not making its way through the material itself. It's making its way through the seams. And that's because that's where the sewing has been done to connect one panel to the other. You have small holes that water can make its way into. Also, water can be absorbed by the thread that's connecting the two panels. So that's what we're covering. And that is why we're seam sealing the outside of the tent. If you seam seal the inside, then all of those seams, all of that stitching, all of that thread gets wet and you will have a higher likelihood of issues. So seam seal the outside, prevent the water from even coming into contact with the thread and the seams. When I begin seam sealing a tent, I start at one point and I work my way out. So I'm going to start here at this point I'm going to seam seal around here. I'm going to do this seam here and the stitching. Then I'm going to go straight up. Then I'll come back and I'll go straight over and so on. Luckily, when you're seam sealing, you can see that you've coated the material. So it is something that you can see. That way, when you think you're done, you can actually go around the tent. You can take a look and confirm it. You can see how I'm holding this in my hand, the plungers in my palm. And basically, I could push on this and squeeze out the seam sealer. I will put it on, go around, then I'll switch hands, take my acid brush and fan it out. Making sure to cover all of the seams, making sure to cover all of the thread. I'm switching over to the acid brush and I'm covering up all of that thread there. Okay, now I'm going up a little bit higher. Switching over to the brush. Focusing on what I just done here, you can see the stitching on the outside. There's two lines, there's one here, one above it. So I went across those, used the brush, smoothed it out. Also, there's a flap that goes around here. I seam sealed underneath that and used the brush to kind of fan it out too. The same applies for this seam here. You have two lines of stitching, coated it. Then you have this crease right here where the material is basically folded under and sewed. So I seam sealed underneath that, used the brush, fanned it out. Now we're going up here and higher, all the way up to the top. With this seam here, you can't see the stitching, but you can see where the stitching's at. This is what we're covering. We're gonna squirt it right into here and then fan it out as we go up. Starting down at the bottom, I have that tip right underneath that edge of the material. When I stop, I pull back on the plunger just a little bit. That way the seam sealer doesn't continue to come out of the syringe. Switching over to the brush. I'm just fanning the seam sealer. Now when you're doing this everyone, the most important thing to keep in mind here is that you're doing your best. There's time when the syringe tip will maybe hop out of that seam, maybe run to the side, that's okay. Take your brush, wipe on it, fan it out, and that's all you have to do. I've come back to the point where I started at and I'm going to do this seam that goes across here.
When you come to something like this, make sure to seam seal on both sides. So take the syringe and put it here and then pull this back and put some seam sealer there as well. As you all can see, the seam sealing process is very simple, but it is time consuming. So I'm going to put this in a time lapse. I'm gonna go fast so that I don't waste your time. The most important thing here is that you need to pay attention to detail. Go slow, look at the seams, make sure that you're putting this on liberally for every single seam, because ultimately, is the tent going to leak? It's all on you. If the answer is yes, then you missed something. It's your fault. So pay attention, go slow, listen to some music, and get her done. You will find with this process that you will use very little seam sealer and that's because this process is so efficient. With the other methods, those brush attachments, you will go through so much seam sealer, it's crazy. So far I have all of the vertical seams done and those would be extremely difficult to do without this curved tip syringe. With a brush attachment, which you'll find in some seam sealing kits, you could not do that correctly. Now I'm working on this long seam here, then we'll do the small things and wrap this up. All right, folks, now we're moving over to like this guy line point here. So there's seams that go around and there's also seams here that go across the guy line point itself to attach it to the fly here. You need to make sure to go around, do those on top and go around that guy line point, also underneath it. All right, everybody, that's it. I have seam sealed the tent. If you follow this process, you're going to make easy work of it. Let's see, this took about 45 minutes to seam seal, so that's not bad. Again, folks, it's all about paying attention, going slow, make sure you're hitting all of those seams. The curved tip syringe makes a huge difference, folks. I mean, it really does. With the brush attachment that you find with most kits, you could not have seam sealed this entire tent. Because of the inverted seams, it would have been impossible. Plus, you would have made a huge mess. So without a doubt, the acid brush, the curved tip syringe, it's going to make easy work of this process. Again, it's important to leave these out for at least six hours or longer, if at all possible. Six hours, that's the minimum. Another important point to make is that you should not seam seal with temperatures below 60 degrees. Below 60 and it won't cure correctly. It has to be above 60 degrees. Once you get done seam sealing the tent, go ahead and walk around the tent, making sure that you hit every single point. 
Once you have it done, you let it cure, get it out, waterproof test it. Make sure that it's waterproof. Make sure that you didn't miss anything. That is super important before you take your shelter out into the wild. Coming up very soon here on the channel, we will do a waterproof test with this tent. And also we will test it for condensation, moisture control, and airflow. That is going to be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Folks, if you enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up because it does help. Make sure to comment down below and share your thoughts about the process that I've developed over the last 10 years. Do you like it? Do you prefer something else? Either way is great. Everyone, be well, take care, strength and honor. Bye for now. It's 2 a.m. and I can't fall asleep Cause I'm not tired I'm thinking about the days we used to shine When we were young I told you that we should start a band And reach for the sky It's 2 a.m. and I can't fall asleep I'm just not tired I can hear the raindrops falling